All right, cool. How are you guys doing? It's the Lakeland Magic Podcast. I am Kamran Fuadi. I'm the host, and I'm here with my guest, Drake Jeffries. Jake, Drake. Drake, thank you so much for taking your time to be with us oh, today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, it's the first episode since they've rebooted it since COVID. I handpicked you first, so you should feel very special. I, I do. Yes, hopefully you do. You know why I picked you first? I don't. Because we're both from Illinois. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's close. No, I'm from Indiana. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm closer to Chicago than you are. Yeah, that's true. It's because you were number one, so I'm just going down the jersey number one. Okay. Yeah. So, you, well, you skipped scrub, though. Number zero. Oh, he, I did. I did. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Sorry, Jay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, so um, you've been in Orlando for a little bit now. You're from the Midwest. Uh, what's it like living in Orlando, the difference is? I love it. I mean, there's warm weather all the time. So much more to do. Like, where I come from is 20,000 people, like, really small. Um, so having the warm weather, being able to do things, like, go outside and do stuff, it's, it's so much better. I've never lived anywhere warm, and I've never lived anywhere that has, like, had a Chipotle or Chick-fil-A. Like, ever. This is the first time I've ever lived anywhere with either of those. There's no Chipotle by you? Uh, well, it's, I... it's 30 minutes away. It's the closest one. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I looked up what town you're from. I'd never heard of that Illinois. Yeah, so, um, yeah it's, nobody has. <laughs> so for me, being from the Chicago area, I thought it was really odd, but it was cool you are from Illinois. And then, uh, had you been to Orlando in your life beforehand? Yes, so I got played at AAU when I was down here. I was younger, I was probably like 16 or 17 up at AAU here. Um, and then like Disney World stuff when I was younger too, so. Cool, yeah, so it's your first time living in the nice warm weather. Yeah. Everybody yeah. back home right now has been talking about how cold it is. I'm yeah. sure your Snapchat looks the same as mine and you're kind of sitting there being like, ha <laughs> Exactly, it's like 20 degrees at home already. Like, and like all my friends in Wyoming, it's like freezing out there. So like, you know, they're, they're suffering. Thankfully I'm not. Yeah, I did some of the memes. It's like, oh, we had 10 inches of sunshine today. I don't know how I'm gonna make it to work. Right, <laughs> right. So in Orlando, you've been living out here. Have you, uh, been visiting any of the parks since you've been in Orlando? No, I want to. I mean, I've heard Disney Springs is fun. I, I haven't been there yet. Um, I, I go to Lake Eola sometimes. I right. walk around there and just relax. Um, you ever go to the farmer's market on Sundays over there? I do. That's why I just went there on two days ago. My wife Sunday. and I go every so often. Really? It. Yeah, yeah, it's an awesome time. I, I love it too. Um, but no, no parks yet, but hopefully soon I can get out there. All right, and uh, what's your favorite thing to do in the area so far? Like, um, do you have like any like go-to places? Is Chipotle and Chick-fil-A is that your go-to uh, right I now? Have, I haven't been to Chick-fil-A while I've been down here, um, but Chipotle I've been a, a plethora of times. I've been to Chipotle a lot, but probably like Lake Yola on Sundays, uh, the, the market is fun. You know, me and my girlfriend go, we have a good time and spend time with each other, and that's definitely one of our favorite activities together. Awesome. When I bump into you, don't act like you don't know me. I won't. <laughs> you don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, so uh, something I want to talk about. Number one, number one, why the number one? Uh, I've actually worn a couple of different numbers. Like when I was in high school, I wore 33, I wore 20, and I wore 14. Kind of is all random. And then when I went to my first school, Minot State, I wore 14 for the two years I was there. When I went to Indian Hills, I wore 14 there. And then I went to Wyoming, I wore number zero. And I was like, I really like that number, but Scrub had it. Obviously Scrub's been in you know, the league a little bit longer than I have. so. You know, obviously he's going to keep it, and so let him have it, and I'll just pick the next closest number, the le next lowest number I could get, so All what right. one it is. You, why don't you go double zero? That's even lower. Oh, I could. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but it is what it is. Number one is. is All right, good. number one, do you know any players that have been within the Magic organization, whether it's uh, with Lakeland or Orlando, that have worn number one? Can you name any players? T-Mac. T-Mac, yeah, all right, you got um, one. I, that's pretty much it. That's it, yeah, that's your, that's your youthfulness showing. Yes, exactly, just T-Mac. That's the only one, huh? I think so, that I know of. Do you know who uh, Oh, J.I., J.I. wears number one. J.I. wears number one, yes. Yeah. Jonathan Isaac wears number one, and he played in Lakeland for a bit wearing number one. That's right, so. coming back from injury, right? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. coming back, he played a couple games with us. Okay. But there's someone even bigger than both those guys. What, when's the, the time? Well, one of those two banners on that wall were put up by him. Shaq did not wear number one. Was not Shaq. Al Alex doesn't know Penny. what he's talking about. Penny. Yes. That's Penny Hardaway, man. Penny. Oh. That's who it is. Penny, yeah. You hit me from that, okay. It's magic royalty, man. You better hope Penny doesn't see this. I know. <laughs> Sorry, Penny. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's a, that's a couple of them. Another banner for the other one, not the 95 one, but the 09 one. There's another point guard. I don't, I don't know. This is like real like NBA fans uh -huh. know who this dude is. We got him because Jameer Nelson had torn his shoulder and could not play for a good long run of the playoffs. So we needed a point guard. We got him on, he wore number one, helped lead us to the NBA Finals in 2009. 
Well, the only person that I know was a point guard here outside of the guys that are here now is like DJ Augustine. DJ Augustine. Yeah, I like it. DJ a lot. That's DJ's it. cool. That's it. Um, his name was Ray for Alston, though. I've heard the name. But yeah, so I've Ray for Alston was a phenomenal player. Uh, just really highly loved out here because obviously going to the finals is mm -hmm. a massive deal for any team. And right. We got him midway through the season after Jameer Nelson and Torres Labrum mm -hmm. and came in, did an awesome job and had a lot of fun. We beat out LeBron and the Cavaliers back then to get mm -hmm. here and, and the Boston Celtics, one okay. of those great teams. Okay. All right, so we talked about college a little bit. Mm -hmm. So your time with the Cowboys, you went to the tournament. Yeah. Talk about the tournament. Unreal experience. That was, that's always, you know, that's a kid's dream to play in the tournament. Um, so I wish obviously we would have went a, a different way. We lost by eight points to Indiana. Trent is an Indiana alum. Uh, so I hear about it all the time from him. Um, it's a nice guy. Yeah, he is, but you know I didn't play my best, and I wish that's one game that I wish I could have had back for sure. Because um, like as a team, like we just we didn't play great, but you know my time as a, as a Cowboy and my time in that tournament was just like an unreal experience. So how was that whole season as a Cowboy? You did one season there, or was it two? Two. So the first okay. year was the 2021 um, kind of like COVID, no fans, fake year kind of thing. And then my fifth year, I did because I redshirted my first year um, okay. of college. So my first year, or my last year, was here at Wyoming, and you know we went from a 14-win team to 25 wins in a season. But even before that, I mean, it was like a seven-win team to 14 to then 25. Um, so you know we had a lot of success, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, they seem to like you over there. The fans do. Yeah. We, we've talked to Wyoming a couple times, and yeah. they tell us, "Send us over any Drake Jeffries footage you have." Yeah, yeah, they like you over yeah, there. Yeah, no, they're, they're like good guys. I mean, I worked for them because I did, you know, an, uh, an internship in media relations. Oh, very cool. So um, I was doing like a lot of photography and stuff. So those guys, I'm real close with all them. So it's fun. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds awesome. So we talked about that. What is the transition going like from the tournament? You finish that and you go to the G League here over at Lakeland. What's that transition like? Uh, it's been, it's different for sure. You know, games probably a lot more fast paced, a lot more physical. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, but it's like, it's like playing with those guys too. Like it's, you know, it's surreal. Like, like I never thought I'd be here. So, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and the game is, you know, it's definitely slowing down for me now. Cause at first it was like crazy, crazy, like, you know, this, that, like, but definitely like, I'm definitely like, you know, smoothing out. We're 10 games in already, which is crazy it's flying by, but you know, sm smoothing it in and, you know, just trying to take it day by day. At what point did you realize that being at the NBA level, even if it's G League, if, if, if it's suiting up for Orlando for one game, at what point did you realize this was like something that's actually going to come to fruition? Like it was a possibility. Cause you know, throughout your whole life as a kid, middle school, you and your friends, you know, mm -hmm. Great time, AAU, great time, right. high school, even, you know, and then going to college. Right. But, you know, everybody dreams of it. But when right. is the moment that, like, it really hit where you're like, wow, I might actually have a real shot at being in the league. Right. I think, like, you know, we came down a couple, for a couple of days, practiced with them, kind of got to see everything. And then I think, like, whenever I actually, like, suited up for that game, I was like, wow, like, this could definitely happen. Like, I think that, that day, like, from the very beginning to the very end, like, it was just also so surreal like something I dreamed of you know for for so long so and I you know super super grateful for it so we talk about the one game where you suited up what number did you have on your jersey because I didn't see the jersey that night I know you suited up but uh, like you said exhibit 10 and obviously you weren't number one no nope. because Jonathan Isaac had that do you know what number you were do you I remember do. still yeah I picked it I picked it number 55 55 double nickels all right all right 55 now I'm gonna throw you under some because I'm like the biggest magic fan in the world okay <laughs> Do you know anyone that wore 55 in Orlando jersey? No. His name is Etwan Moore. I do know. I've heard of Etwan. Did yeah. he go to Purdue? He did go to Purdue. Yeah, see. He's I from East e Chicago. Yeah. And he had two stints with the Magic, and he sure. wore 55 both times. Okay. So yeah, Etwan okay. Moore, veteran guard. Yep. Yeah, he's still around every so often. I know he went to the last big one that he had was with the Phoenix Suns when they were on that finals run. Okay. And then he yeah. played here uh, last year, I believe it was again. So yeah, 55. Yeah, you I like that number. So like, if I get, you know, <laughs> hopefully get a 10 day with them and you know, that'll be my number again is number 55. 55, all right, I'll look for it. I'll buy yeah. that one. Okay. I'll buy that Double one. Nickels. I'll number one. I'll get, I'll get 55 for when I want to put that one on. Double nickels. So what is the experience like going to work with Orlando in that one game? You're suiting up, you're wearing number 51. I remember you were sitting there doing shoot around, looking at you. So what is the diff, not even what's the difference, I guess really, 
What all did you get to do with your one one day? I've always been so curious about what players get to do with that. So it was like uh, wake up. We had shoot around at Advent yeah. or at the new facil uh, facility, and you know shoot around was from like 10 to 11. We got shots up before, got shots up after. Um, then I went home for a little bit, like hung out. Actually, I had to pick up my agent from the airport because he wanted to come, so okay. went went picked him up, um, dropped him off, and then went to the arena. Came here. And then, you know, just like walking in, I walked into the locker room because obviously, you know, the locker room's over there and just mm -hmm. walked into the locker room and like saw my jersey hanging up with like, you know, Orlando Magic across the front, my name on the back. And like, it was just so like crazy, um, you know, but then went to the locker room, got activated and then went on the court. You played a little bit of three on three, got a bunch of shots up, came back, ate, hung out, talked to guys. Um, and then I went back out again and got more shots up kind of when everybody else was done. Um, and then came back in, Coach Mose talked to us, and then we just got ready to go and beat the Grizzlies, so. Yeah, I was at that game. Uh, let's think about this. Is there anyone that was on Orlando that uh, was any kind of advice for you or anything of that nature? Was it kind of talking to people like Sko or talking to Kivon as they're both on two ways between mm -hmm. the two team, or was it more just you were sitting there trying to absorb everything? Uh, definitely a little bit like of you know, me absorbing, but I think like I definitely, Picks T. Ross's brain a lot, just because like you know he's a shooter like I am. He's athletic. Um, you know, I'm trying to get to like his level. Yeah. Uh, so, like the way he shoots it, the, like how athletic he is, like the way he moves. Like I'm trying to get to that. So I definitely picked his brain a yeah. lot. You know, I think we saw that the other night when you had a poster, <laughs> and I was calling the game. I do some broadcasting, and uh, Nick Bredewitz, who was beside me. Him and I were, we were in awe. Yeah. We, I, I didn't know you had that athleticism in you. And then yeah. today at practice, you were doing all kinds of dunks. And, yeah. But it wasn't just a dunk that you put up. You weren't on a fast break. You, you got a poster in yeah. that last game. Yeah. And that was one of your two made shots this season that were not from three. Right. So I think you've made 30 shots this whole year, 30 mm -hmm. field goals made, and two of them have not been threes. That is one of them. So that one... I'll take that one every time. Right, right. Yeah, one was a, a layup in Birmingham. Actually, no, I actually have three because I have one in Birmingham. Okay. I've had two in Birmingham and then that dunk. Um, but not a lot of people don't know that I got athleticism like that. Like, I have a 40 inch vertical. Wow. So, um, yeah, speaking of Birmingham, didn't you shoot six threes? You made six threes in that game, I think. Off, both off times. The bench. Wow. Both times, yeah. First time was um, all in the first half, and the second time was mostly all in the second half. So. And then even the other night when, you know, to this date that we're filming this right now, you are number two in three-pointers made in the G League right now. You had knocked four threes in the fourth quarter, was it? Something like that, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like what I've always been trained to do is just shoot the ball, and, you know, I got to – I feel like if I ever want to make make it to the NBA, it's you know something that everybody needs is shooting. So you know, just if I lock up on defense and you know knock down open shots, it could be a real chance. Oh yeah, I mean, you knock them down, and it's not even like you just take a three pointer. You're deep. A lot of the time, <laughs> you're deep, and that's yeah. one of the things that I try to emphasize on the broadcast. You're another three or four feet back. It yeah. seems like sometimes, which yeah. I know we have a different world in this day and age mm -hmm. because of everyone that is shooting threes and everyone goes from so deep, but. It's amazing to see because someone like me that never played college ball, when yeah. I go out on the court and I take some shots sometimes, that NBA three is a little bit farther back. And, yeah. then, you, and then you make it a whole nother NBA three from the high school three. Right. So right. Yeah. <laughs> you're going pretty far back. It's a lot of fun watching you do it, Drake. Thank you. Thank so you. I got a couple more on here I want to look over. Let's see, Midwest, all right. Oh, this one, this is a great one. And this is for a lot of fans out in Lakeland. If you guys come out, Drake, you seem to really embrace people in the stands mm -hmm. after the game. You're really excited about it. That's part of why I wanted you on this podcast. Yeah. Not because of number one <laughs> and not because of Illinois, but because of how much you embrace the fandom mm -hmm. around. You signed autographs after the first home game. Yep. What's it like? Why, why do you embrace the fans like that? A lot of people don't, and you really seem very available. Because I was a kid once, and I know what it's like to, you know, these kids look up to us like you know they, they want an autograph they want a picture like it's it's no big deal like it takes two seconds like it's they're doing the bare minimum and like I, I love it like I love having fan interaction because then they can like get to know like me as a person I can get to know them um, but like I, mean, I, I remember when I, I was a kid you know like I wanted I was actually like funny story it was 2016 out in Vegas USA basketball I'm standing three feet like KD Kyrie LeBron like pop Oh God, a lot of superstars. Like, and I'm like, half of them wouldn't sign. Like, uh, and I, I remember that. Like, is like, to this day, just like I was like, I never want to be like that. Like, I want to like assign as many as I can. 
you know, and try to help like these kids out. Cause that's that's what they came to see, and you know, you know, all that extra. It's like extra for them if they you know, obviously they get to watch the game, but like the extra is like getting to talk to them, getting autographs, all that stuff. So yeah. Did you ever have a player that you got to meet when you were younger, and they did sign any autographs for you? Uh, actually, it's funny because being from Illinois, like I grew up an Illinois basketball fan, but like I'm not like a huge fan anymore. Um, and my my favorite growing up was D Brown. Okay. So and D Brown, like I was like a huge D Brown fan, and I mean I had met him when I was like six. I saw him at Walmart actually from <laughs> in, my, in my hometown and like took a picture with him, and then you know what? 15 years later, um, leaving my junior college, looking for my next spot, and he's recruiting me to come to Illinois Chicago. Wow. I got his number in my phone. Like, it's crazy, like, how it all comes full circle. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Put in the work. Yeah. All right, so you are a rookie on the team. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, it's a little bit different with G League and going into the NBA. Do you have a vet on the team? Jamario. Jamario, all yeah. right. Do you have any rookie duties you have to do? Uh, really, it's just like when we go to the airport and getting on and off the bus, like, I got to take a bag, usually, like, a um, an equipment bag, a performance bag, you know, a bag that's full of things that are going to help us get better um so it's not a big deal yeah i mean it's, it's really simple and these guys are pretty chill with it uh so far so has jamario given you any good advice what what would you say is the best advice you've got from jamario so far um it's not even like i've actually had a, like good advice from a couple guys like you know zay said be where your feet are you know obviously everybody wants to make the nba but you know we're in the g league right now so you know focus on what what we're doing here you know be where your feet are focus on what's the task at hand um, but like Jamario is, you know, always just like telling me to stay focused, like keep my head down, keep working just because like, you know, sometimes you can get lost in what's going on. And like, you know, he's definitely been a big help because like some games I'll play 30 minutes, some games I'll play 10 minutes. And he's like, you know, just just stay ready. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just stay locked in and your time's going to come. He said, like, because when he was a rookie, you know, he didn't start playing until almost the second half of the season. So like wow. for him to say that to me, that's definitely super helpful, you know, just being able to, to take advice like that. Now, so we talked about your uh, big game you had the other night. It was, I don't, I don't think you've beaten it yet, but the one in Birmingham where you did knock down the six threes, the most recent one, mm -hmm. you had a career high of 24. Yeah. Have you beaten that one yet or no? Because it's been a couple days since that. That's when I wrote up these questions last. I don't think you've beaten 24 yet. No, I, was like, I had 11 threes in a game in college. But that was it. That, that was college. Yeah, the, the, yeah. We've talked about how the pace is a little bit different. Yeah, you know, in the so G League. I, I got to beat six, man. So I, I think it'll come. 24 so. points. How, how long until you think we're cracking 30 here, Drake? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully we added the bag a little bit more. I know. don't think it's going to be much longer. I hope not. I, I don't think so. You're, you're a joy to watch. Thank you. So I think that pretty much will conclude everything that we have today, Drake. Really appreciate you. Really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Um, anything you would like to say to any fans that are listening, anyone from Lakeland? No, hopefully we keep seeing you guys at games. Um, it's, been a, it's been a good time. Um, hopefully just keep building. Right. Hopefully I'm going to hit seven, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. How about seven, that? Seven, eight, nine. That's what I like. Thank you. Thank appreciate you, Drake. We appreciate your time, dude. Absolutely. Thank you so much.